Hello, everybody. My name is David Noyce. I'm the professor of civil environmental engineering in the College of Engineering. I also serve as the executive associate dean in the College of Engineering. And today I want to talk to you about so some of the things that we are doing in my area of research, which is traffic operations and safety. So we focus on many, many different things related to how vehicles operate, how the transportation systems operate, and how we safely and efficiently move people and goods throughout the system. So the lab I started almost 20 years ago is called the Traffic Operations and Safety Laboratory. No surprise there, right? And what you see on the screen here is some of the things that we do on a regular basis. And one of them that I'm just gonna share with you just as an example here is the implementation of the flashing yellow arrow indication that you see at most signalized intersections, not only around the state of Wisconsin, but around the country. And this is something as simple as it may look that we developed here at the University of Wisconsin and continue to work on. And it's a way of improving efficiency while also improving the safety of intersections, which is our primary driver for everybody across the country, including all of us here in the state of Wisconsin. What we found is the flashing yellow arrow is critically important to not only making sure drivers better understand what to do at a signalized intersection when you're making your permissive left turn, but also adding to the efficiency and adding to the safety. And what we know for sure is over the last couple of decades, we, we've saved countless lives and improved the efficiency of intersections, which is really our goal in all of the research we do here within the lab. So what we're doing or what we are doing now is trying to take that basic operations component and moving it forward into building in technology. And the, the brief example I'm showing you here is in Madison on Park Street, if you're familiar with that area. And one of the neat things that we're doing here is where we're using the Park Street corridor as an example to show how roadside technology can be used to communicate with vehicles and communicate not only with the vehicles themselves, but also amongst vehicles as they travel down the Park Street corridor. And the concept here is, is to use technology, again, safety and efficiency are the theme, but also be able to communicate what's happening from the traffic signals, from, from the operations within the system, and more importantly, from the transit, to make sure that we can move people efficiently, the transit systems can get out to the, the, the outer fringes of the city of Madison and serve the population accordingly. And we can have all this communication going on so we can optimize the traffic flow we can think about how to make sure that all the movements that need to use Park Street and even into Fish Hatchery Road here onto the Beltline happen in a safe and efficient way. And then how can we use this technology to make sure we add the safety? So vehicles can communicate with each other. We can predict when vehicles are gonna arrive at intersections. So we make sure there's not a red light runner. We make sure the vehicles, when they interact with pedestrians and bicycles, do it in a safe and efficient way. And there's many, many things that can come out of this in terms of how we can optimize the system and the flow through, through a corridor like Park Street. I welcome to demonstrate this to, to everybody. So this is always something if you're interested that you get a hold of, of us here in the lab and we'd be happy to show you more about it. What this leads to, of course, is the, the, the movement that you're all familiar with and that's the movement to automated vehicles. And we are bringing automated vehicles to the state of Wisconsin. Some of you may have experienced a demonstration we did up at the state capitol and, and around the city here um, a short couple of years ago. And you can see the vehicle here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, we are now, and we have recently purchased our own automated vehicle. It'll look something similar to what you see in the lower right-hand corner. And we're partnering with the city of Racine and Gateway Technical College to, to bring this to life. And what we're going to do is not only demonstrate it in the city of Racine and show how we can interact with many of the things I talked about with a Park Street example a moment ago, but also, one of the biggest challenges with technology is building trust. And we want people in the state of Wisconsin to be comfortable with this new technology and be able to show that this is the way of the future, that we can do so many wonderful things in transportation, again, from a safety and efficiency standpoint with this type of technology. So you'll be seeing more of this as we move forward in the very near future. And we'll show how, how we can make some, some wonderful changes to the transportation system and accommodate these automated vehicles as we move forward. So in order for us to do this correctly, though, we have to understand us. And what I mean by that is we have to know how vehicles and drivers interact, especially with an automated vehicle, because there's certain times where you are going to have to manually operate it still. 
So that's why we call it automated instead of autonomous, because we're a long ways from being completely autonomous to where the vehicle completely operates on its own. In the interim, we have to have this driver vehicle interaction. So we're fortunate at the University of Wisconsin here in Madison in the College of Engineering to have a full scale driving simulator. And the driving simulator that you see in the photo is an actual vehicle. And we can put drivers in this vehicle in a safe environment, create visual worlds and different scenarios, and we can test how drivers interact with the system. There are endless number of things we can do here. There's an endless number of things we have or, or can explore and have explored over the years. And this continues to be one of our primary mechanisms in order to help us understand how drivers and vehicles will interact as we move into the technologies that we're seeing and what will be coming down here in the very near future. So one of the things that I think is important for us to understand as well is that this leads into better understanding the overall safety of the system. We are partnering with our corporate partner, our corporate folks here in the state of Wisconsin, American Family Insurance being the one that I'm showing you here, and looking at how safety data can be used to better predict where there are safety issues and how it can ensure that the citizens of the state of Wisconsin are as safe as reasonably possible. You know, how can we make sure that your travel is going to be as safe as it possibly can be? For years, we have managed all of the crash data for the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. So, so we, we take the, the, the crash data as it comes in from the police reports, we process that data and we create a number of things that are useful to the Department of Transportation and other state and local and county municipalities and their law enforcement folks. But if you look at the lower corner here of the diagram, you see spot maps or what we call heat maps. And we're able to identify where there are safety issues so we can address them proactively instead of reactively and find ways to improve the transportation system from a safety standpoint, which is obviously important to all of us. So we focus on this data analytics, which is really where the future of a lot of what we're doing is, is centered around and that's data, understanding the data and the data that's coming from all the vehicles in the transportation system, then helping us put that into play here to better understand the overall safety. So what are we doing here to impact the state of Wisconsin? Well, hopefully you see there's many things. Here I'm showing you again the, a reinforcement of some of the safety data that's available to all of you. If you're interested in looking at it at your local home and communities or wherever you're interested across the state of Wisconsin. We have access to this database that shows you all the information um, where previous crashes have happened, what are some of the traffic operations conditions there, you know, where are we looking in terms of making improvements across the, the, the system, across the infrastructure in order to improve safety in the future. So we, uh, we, when the crash reports come in, um, we process it very quickly. Um, most often within the next day or two, there, there's real-time information. And I think our, our, our colleagues at the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and the, the cities and the counties and others across the state of Wisconsin will tell you that they use this tool. It's a powerful tool and it's allowing all of us to work together to make the Wisconsin roadways as safe as we possibly can. So what I hope you've seen here in a quick snapshot that we in the Traffic Operations and Safety Lab at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and across the College of Engineering are working aggressively across the area of traffic operations and safety to, to improve everything in the state of Wisconsin and our connections not only from making the roadways more efficient and making them safe, but also looking at the other part of transportation, which is the movement of people and goods and working with our transit agencies, our large cities, our freight folks and, and other private industries that are focused on freight from many different aspects and really all aspects across the Wisconsin transportation system here that we're focused on. So let me conclude there and thank you for your time. And hopefully you found this an interesting contribution Always glad to communicate with you if, if anything you if anything I talked about you'd like to learn more about. Thank you.